Are all verticals parallel? A quick follow-up to my quote-unquote rebuttal to Bev over at Try Thinking. Let me say that at the outset, uh, Bev has stated repeatedly that all verticals are parallel, but he has made no claim about the shape of the Earth. Because I rushed my previous video out the door and into the cloud, I made a few mistakes. First, I was confused by flat Earth geography, but let's be confused. Let's be honest. Uh, flat Earth geography is confusing. And when I made my adjusted diagram, converting the long horizontal into a gently curving level line, I left in the annotations for horizontal, but without straight line segments. So here's a more accurate version showing horizontals in red, each perpendicular to their local vertical. And lastly, I was trying to be cute with the yellow edits on my final slide, but what ended up on screen wasn't entirely logically correct, although my narration was. I should have included an additional bullet, we observe in the real world with precision instruments that vertical lines diverge. A note on this algebraic procedure to show that 2 equals 1. My point was to show that a series of steps which appear logical may contain a fatal flaw. We'll revisit this concept several times in this video. Bev went over my video on his channel, but he never reacted to the fact that all the surveying and engineering diagrams and definitions were of level as a curving surface. What say you, Bev? Okay, I'd like to start this video with another puzzle to get people thinking. You're a contestant in a game show where there are three closed doors. There are billy goats behind two of the doors while one door hides a brand new car. The game show host asks you to pick one of the three doors and let's say you pick door A. The host, who knows where the car is and wants to build suspense, opens door C to reveal a goat. The host, the host asks you, do you want to switch your choice or stay with your original door? So should you switch to door B? Common sense says switching doesn't matter since there are two doors left and one of them has the car. In fact, when this pu puzzle was published in Parade Magazine in 1990, almost 1,000 PhDs wrote in to say that switching doesn't matter since it's 50-50. I've diagrammed all 12 possible scenario outcomes, and if you switch, you'll win exactly half the time. Now let's talk about Arthur Alexander Merrill, whose used books regularly sell for hundreds of dollars on eBay. He was an engineer and a statistician, and also my grandfather. Next to my father, he was the smartest man I've ever met. And when posed with this problem, he said, switching didn't matter. He told me, you can't change probabilities after the fact. So again, should you switch? Common sense, common sense says it doesn't matter. A thousand PhDs agree. When we diagram the situation, six wins and 12 possible scenario outcomes, this indicates it doesn't matter. And Arthur A. Merrill, who is a member of Mensa, also said it didn't matter. So what's your decision? You could go with the seemingly logical results, or you could try it in the real world and see what happens. Now let's get back to the diagram that started it all on Bev's Try Thinking Discord live stream. So let's remove the clutter and make it bigger and move things around so I can make the text size larger. We'll step through this together. Saragaki starts with a few definitions. Perpendicular to the plane of the horizon or to a primary axis, vertical. This is copied straight out of Merriam-Webster's online dictionary. Parallel to, in the plane of, or operating in a plane parallel to the horizon, or to a baseline, level, horizontal. Also copied verbatim from Merriam-Webster. The proof states that given two right angles, prove the two upright lines are parallel to each other. If two lines are cut by a transversal, and the corresponding angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. This is a statement of the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Next, he identifies the two right angles and points out that, by definition, they are congruent to each other. He used an equal sign, but I'm not going to take off any points. He then describes what corresponding angles are, on the same side of the transversal, but with one interior and one exterior. Here's an illustration of corresponding angles. He then describes how the two lines intersect the baseline, forming corresponding angles, which gives us our conclusion that CD is parallel to EF. He already said this in step one and could have saved a lot of time. But the unstated implication of this proof and in the diagram is that all verticals are parallel, 
which agrees with Bev's explicitly stated opinion that all verticals in reality are parallel. Let me give you my version if I were the geometry teacher. Given the two right angles, prove the two uprights are parallel. We'll begin by making a classic two-column proof structure with statements and reasons. It may seem silly, but all the statements must have a reason, and we often begin by restating the facts that were given, such as the fact that we have two right angles. Next is another seemingly silly statement, that all right angles are congruent. We could have been talking about two acute angles, but then it is not true that all acute angles are congruent, so the statement does serve a purpose. And the last statement of a geometric proof always restates the desired goal. In this case, to prove that the two uprights are parallel to each other by reason of the converse of corresponding angles postulate. And here's the important part. Segment DF can be any length from one inch to 100 miles or more, and the two uprights will still be parallel. This is because in Euclidean geometry, all diagrams are infinitely scalable. Okay, let's see if I've given you enough clues to find out everything that's wrong with this geometric proof. But before we do that, let's take a tour of some books from my home library. Let's start by looking at uh, the Trivium, um, which is the first three um, books in, the, in the, the liberal arts. So I like the way um, the author says the Trivium is uh, logic, grammar, and rhetoric, but then the other, the four remaining books in the seven liberal arts are arithmetic, music, geometry, and astronomy. So I know uh, Bev is very interested in, in logic and geometry, but I, I would recommend that you really take a study of geometry, not just, uh, you know, <laughs> not just what you think you remember. And then, of course, uh, study astronomy as well. Um, and that, that will be a worthwhile study. Um, but let's... Um, Let's start with a geometry textbook, and I'm I'm just basically going to look into the um, the the index. So let's look up in the H, and we see there is no um, definition of horizontal. We see horizontal angle of danger. I'll cover that when I do the sextant. Let's take a look at V. We see uh, uh, vertical angles, uh, but we see no no definition of uh, vertical um, lines. So now let's take a look at another uh, textbook, uh, Discovering Geometry. This does not have horizontal and vertical in the uh, in the index. And now we have a thin little book, uh, Analytic Geometry. This is a, a nice old school book from I think the 19... 1950s, 1958, but it does not have uh, horizontal and vertical lines in uh, in the index. Now here's uh, plane geometry. Um, horizontal and vertical are not in the index, but what's uh, interesting is that it does have uh, a definition of vertical lines, or I'm sorry, vertical angles, um, but then it actually has a section where it goes into a little bit of uh, surveying, and, and it mentions uh, that the the surveyor measures horizontal and vertical angles uh, using a transit, and that's clearly using a different definition uh, for the word horizontal or for the word vertical, especially the word vertical angles. And now we have a a um, tutorial guide for for geometry. I don't know, five hundred some pages. Uh, no definition for horizontal and and vertical. And now this is one of my favorite favorite books, uh, Geometry by Harold Jacobs. Um, if you want to, if you want to actually really read a geometry book that is like genuinely readable, um, this this book is is absolutely excellent. Um, and uh, <laughs> he has uh, an interesting chapter or a, a lesson here called the Triangle Angle Sum Theorem Revisited, which means the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 um, unless uh, you're dealing with non-Euclidean geometry. So the geometry of Lobachevsky, uh, it's less than 180, and, and Riemann, uh, it's more than, than 180. So I thought you might find that, uh, that a little interesting.
And now this is the, the book I spent the most time teaching out of when I was, uh, when I was teaching geometry. Uh, and again, uh, horizontal and vertical are not in the index. Um, but what is, is uh, horizontal and components, horizontal and vertical components of, of vectors. Um, so, and again, if you just have the xy, you know, xy plane and you define up as being the y axis, then you could talk about the horizontal and vertical components of, of these vectors. Now, this, uh, this book, I'm actually, um, oops, sorry, I'm uh, Prentice Hall's Geometry. I'm actually tutoring uh, a student right now out of, uh, out of this book. Um, but uh, it, it, again, it does not have horizontal and vertical lines um, in, in this. But uh, here's the converse of the corresponding angles. Postul oops, I guess you can't see that. Here's the converse of the corresponding angles uh, postulate, which we just talked about. And I thought this was interesting. Uh, that whole proof uh, done by um, Sarah Gacki, uh, here's, um, here's it, it summarized, a very similar diagram. Uh, you're given uh, two lines are both perpendicular to the same line. Uh, so in a plane, two lines are perpendicular and, and prove that these two lines are parallel to each other. And their, uh, <laughs> their proof is literally two sentences long. Um, now, they do mention um, horizontal and vertical in the sense of equations of horizontal and vertical lines. Um, but again, they just use uh, x as a, you know, the horizontal component and y as the vertical component. Um, but we'll see very soon that that's not technically a, a definition. Now, next I want to cover um, a little bit of analytical uh, geometry. So. Uh, this was uh, my first calculus uh, textbook in, in college, uh, uh, Mizrahi and, and Sullivan. And again, the horizontal and vertical are not defined in the index. Um, but what is, what is interesting is that when you take a look at functions and what is a function, uh, it talks about any, any vertical line, I guess you can't see my finger, uh, any vertical line that intersects the graph in more than one point, the graph is not that of a function. So this is called the vertical, the vertical line test in... Um, in, in calculus. What else do I have here? Oh, but we'll very <laughs> we'll very soon see that the you can't define vertical as being the y-axis because as soon as you go into the third dimension, um, frequently the vertical axis or the quote unquote vertical axis is now the z-axis. Uh, so here is a uh, an octant of a of a sphere, and then doing some uh, triple integrals for that. Here's another uh, book at Calculus and Analytic Geometry. Again, horizontal and vertical are not in the index uh, as far as defining the lines, but what, uh, what they do talk about, very similar to uh, the vertical line test, is uh, a vertical asymptote. So you have uh, a line that, that approaches a line, or you know, a, a graph approaches an asymptote but never, never quite reaches there. Um, but I thought this is kind of interesting. They, they do kind of touch upon um, non-Euclidean geometry. So here's, um, here's some stuff about latitude and longitude and then great circle, great circle roots. And then they even go even further with uh, non-Euclidean geometry. So um, we talk about, you know, surfaces. And then can you describe, can you describe locations on that surfaces? And the answer that uh, on that surface, this is called a saddle. And the answer is yes, you can describe the location uh, using two dimensions. And here's another um, uh, surface with uh, local minimums and local maximums. And clearly, that is non, not a Euclidean, a Euclidean surface. So I. Um, I want to finish up with uh, one of my favorite geometry books by Isidore Dressler. Uh, I taught extensively out of this book as well, and this is a very old school, old school textbook in that uh, it's got um, constructions. So I actually had my students doing doing constructions with uh, straight uh, straight edge and, and compass. Um, but I just wanted to <laughs> point out uh, <laughs> a little point: uh, if a plane intersects a sphere. Uh, the intersection is a circle. And so they indicate that with a drawing because 
some people tended to indicate that I, I was uh, crazy for saying for saying such a thing. Since you're wondering, yes, these are all books from my home bookshelves. My wife and I have an understanding. She can listen to all the true crime podcasts she wants, and I get to have book bookshelves in most of the rooms of our house. And as I discovered, none of these math books defined horizontal or vertical the way they were used in Saragaki's proof. Even Euclid himself couldn't have used these words as they hadn't been invented yet. So let's look at another online dictionary for the definition of horizontal. Collins seems to indicate that horizontal means basically the same thing as flat and level. And in common usage among average people, that's perfectly fine. But if the discussion is about the shape of the earth, then we might want to turn to a surveyor's definition. In this case, level, which is a, a curved surface, but can be considered a plane when working in a smaller area, for example, a construction site. Remember when we looked in the textbook for plane geometry, we saw the traditional definition of vertical angles, two pairs of which are formed when two lines intersect. Then later in that same book, it talked a bit about surveying with a transit, and it used vertical angles in an entirely different manner. Two definitions, one term. This is why, if understanding is the goal, it's not helpful to bludgeon someone with dictionary definitions out of context. Upon seeing a pretty girl, Mike says, she's so hot, which leads to a medical diagnosis of running a fever. Take some Motrin and drink plenty of liquids. So can you spot the mistakes? It turns out that the proof itself is perfectly valid. It's the embellishments that cause it to fail. Since horizontal and vertical are not defined in geometry, we can't cite them in our proof or label the diagram with those terms either. Let's draw some conclusions and bring this video to a close. One, horizontal and vertical are not defined in Euclidean geometry. Two, therefore, horizontal and vertical cannot be used in geometric proofs. Three, dictionary definitions should not be taken out of context. Informally, a, di a dining room tabletop can be described as flat, horizontal, and level. But in the world of long-distance surveying and engineering, these three terms are distinct. Now let's revisit my modification of this diagram. Level is a curved surface perpendicular to plumb wherever you are on Earth. Horizontal and vertical lines are perpendicular to each other. And we observe in the real world with precision instruments that vertical lines at great distances diverge. Therefore, the Earth cannot be shaped more like a pizza than a basketball. As always, your comments are welcome. Please be kind to each other. Bye.